If you've ever tried to model something in Blender only to become frustrated at how sloppy and uncooperative the mesh becomes, then you could probably do with learning some modeling fundamentals. Fundamentals like the importance of good topology, how to make some surfaces hard and flat whilst others curved and round, how to make edges flow in the direction that you want them to, how to fix shading problems and more. All of which will be taught in this free course that I'm uploading to YouTube in its entirety. By the time you finish, not only will you have learned some very valuable skills that'll give you the confidence to go out and model something by yourself, but you will have finished your very own practical chair that you can use in future scenes because everybody needs a chair. But don't let its deceptively simple looks fool you because it actually has a very unique combination of hard, flat surfaces that need to remain flat and other round surfaces that need to remain round, making this a very perfect subject to learn some fundamental modeling skills. And although this is labeled as a modeling tutorial, of course, at the end, we will also be learning uh, UV unwrapping and texturing this bad boy. Now, this course is for beginners of Blender, but not complete beginners. If you've never touched Blender before, then I recommend my donut tutorial series, which you can watch by clicking the little eye up there um, and finishing at least up until level one. Um, and once you've done that, I would say you are then qualified uh, to watch this course. Now, I know you are very eager to get started in Blender and start modeling, but uh, at this stage, when you're starting a project, um, it helps to get all your ducks lined in a row so you don't make mistakes later on. Um, and what I mean by that is getting clear references and if you can find them, blueprints. Um, so when I started like years ago, when I was like just a beginner of Blender, I used to just go to Google image search and just type in chair and then find an image I like, click it, that was my reference. The problem with that is, as I realize, is that once you start modeling it, eventually you need like another angle of the chair, like the back of the chair, like what does it look like there? And then you go back to the image that you found and realize the chair doesn't have a name. It was just a generic chair that a generic photographer photographed and now I can't find any more reference photos of it. So it's for that reason that today, doesn't matter what I'm making, it could be a speaker, it could be a water bottle. I'm always gonna choose a branded whatever it is, not only because the designs tend to be nicer, but once I know the name of it, I can then find more reference photos later if I need them. And that is highly, highly important. Um, so in our case, we're gonna be using the Danish branded Fredericia, that's the company name. Uh, and the, the type of chair is called the Soborg chair, which I'm sure is not how you pronounce it, but hey, I'm an Australian. I don't know how to pronounce Danish words like that with the little O that goes like that. No idea, it's the Soborg chair. So uh, not only is it good to have this name because we can go back and look for photos if we need them, but uh, in the case of furniture, the manufacturers typically want you to replicate their furniture, believe it or not, because when you put it in Archviz, then maybe a client will want to buy that chair, right? So um, they not only give you like high resolution reference photos in their download section, um, but I learned this on Twitter um, that uh, you can actually find the blueprints just by going to like the uh, 2D, like there's like a drawing file, DWG file. You can open that in Illustrator and that gives you like a vectorized blueprint of the chair. Um, so I converted those into PNG and I've made all this available um, with a zip file in the description. So you click that, download it, that has uh, the blueprints as well as uh, the reference photos all in like a PNG JPEG so it's easy to use. So once we have that, now we can go into Blender and we can start setting it up. So I'm gonna go and delete everything here, not just the cube, but everything indiscriminately. And uh, we're gonna start by loading in those blueprint uh, images. Okay. So we're going to go uh, shift a image reference. Okay. Which is, by the way, this is, I guess it's a relatively new thing with 2.8, but it's so much easier to load in images this way than what it was uh, previously. I had to put it in the background. It was pretty janky, but anyways, so <laughs> we're going to start, uh, we've got three of them. We'll have to do this three times, but uh, the first one top load reference image. Now, um, you might notice that it's come in at a sort of arbitrary angle, and that's because it's it's like aligned to the view that we were looking at. So if it's at this view, um, we could clear this just by going to the item preferences, N properties, and then just clearing the rotation here um, to zero. And now it's where it should be, which is top down, it should be flat on the floor. Um, but 
What this means is for the next ones like side and front view, we should go to that view before we add in the reference photo. So side view is number pad three. Then if we hit shift A image reference, then hit side, you can see it's come in at the correct rotation, which is good. Um, so then we just position this where we want the images. So these are kind of like free floating images, just like a normal image in Blender. It's really handy. I much prefer this reference image than the old one of having it in the background. Um, but yeah, I'm just moving this up so that it sits uh, nicely on the grid floor there. And then the last one, front view, number pad one, image reference and front. And there we go, move it up. And now we should have three blueprints, blueprints ready aligned for our model. Um, now, one thing I like to do is just change the opacity slightly because you can see if you're looking from like behind it, you can't see through it. Um, so I like to change the use alpha, turn that on and then just set the opacity to 50%. And I do that for all of them. And this is all the fun stuff to do before you start the uh, modeling stuff. Um, now, finally, the reference images, right? If you wanted to, you could load your reference images, you know, into a separate view, this set to image editor, and you could load in an image like that, right? However, it's then always there and it's always occupying part of the screen. You don't always need it open. Um, what I prefer instead is to use a free piece of software called Pure Ref. This guy looks like this, it's free. The link uh, is in the description. It's awesome, everybody should use this. Uh, what you can do is add in any images anywhere, just like an open free canvas. So you right click, go load, load images. And then I gave you three reference images. Go ahead, hit open, and it'll just load them all in. And it looks like this. So you zoom in and out with your mouse, a middle mouse to pan around, which is basically blenders, hotkeys as well. Uh, moving the window is right click, just so you know. But uh, but it's really good. Like you can zoom right in, get the full resolution. Um, you don't have to just like select one image and then load in another image, etc. It's It's really good. You can move it, uh, everything around. You can add in like control C and control V images online and just build out this wonderful canvas of all your reference images. Great tool. Anyway, I hope I've sold it to you. It is free after all. <laughs> so now that we've done that, now let's finally, finally start to model this bad boy. Now we need to start with a mesh, some sort of mesh. So shift A mesh, and then I'd like to pick a object which most resembles what it is we are modeling. Now this is a chair, nothing really resembles a chair. However, a chair leg looks similar to a cube. So that's what I'm gonna start with. Um, then I wanna be able to see my reference uh, behind it. So I'm switching to wireframe mode. You can switch between these views just by holding down Z. That's a fast way to sort of switch between them. It's a little pie menu. Um, and then I'm gonna move this to be the front chair leg, right? And just scale it down, down, down to like so. Now this blueprint is a little hard to understand, right? Because it's it's not like just a flat chair leg, right? With with a line at the front and a line at the back. There's also an inner line and that's all the way around. Um, and this is where it helps to look at your reference and corroborate what you think the mesh should look like with what it actually is with the reference. So we can see that th this is a front face there. Like it's, it's very flat edge. Um, and then all the way around it, you've got like a rounded bevel all the way around it and a front flat facing edge. So this line here, like it's not really clear what the blueprint is um, telling us with that. I don't think that's the bevel because that would be a very, very thick bevel. Um, but basically what I'm saying is we're just gonna work off of this front face and this back face. The inner face we won't really bother with, but anyways. Okay, so now in edit mode with our cube here, I'm going to click and drag over it, making sure you are in uh, the X-ray mode, that little button there, or Alt-Z to tab between them. Because otherwise, if you don't have that, you might um, accidentally just be selecting this half of the mesh, which is not good. So X-ray mode, select that, and I'm just gonna move this all the way up to the top, middle clicking so that it locks it to the Z axis, um, or you can change it with whatever, anyway, Z axis. And I'm just gonna create this this front, front leg there. So it's running all the way up the side. And then I'm gonna take just this part, this back part of it, and then I'm gonna move this out 
to about there. And you can see that that's now lining up with our reference, which is nice. And I'll just move that down ever so slightly. And if I'm a real narc, I could just move this over slightly till it lines up. But you know, we got bigger problems ahead of us. <laughs> this is this is getting a little too detailed too early. Um, okay, so now the leg goes back, right? It's this front bit and then it goes back. So we need to add in a loop cut. Control R, which is, uh, it'll give you this little yellow line. So you just go near it, click once. And then the, the second step is where do you want to place this line? So I want to place it basically where that uh, horizontal part of the leg is, like ignore the curve and pretend it's like a hard edge right there. So I'm just going to place it about there. If you get it wrong, by the way, you can double tap G and that'll edge slide and that'll enable you to choose the spot again. Um, but anyways, then I'm gonna just drag over this, this part of the mesh and now hit E to extrude, extrude it backwards uh, to about there. And the rest of it will, this other stuff at the back here we'll get to uh, in part two. Um, brief interjection, by the way, uh, if we go into front view, we should probably position it uh, where where the leg should be. So I'm just gonna move this across to there and uh, it's thinner than what the cube defaulted in at. So I'm just gonna scale it S and then X to scale it along the X axis. And I just want it to, you know, this imaginary line will continue down to there and this imaginary line continue down to there. You know, something like that. Now, you could rotate this uh, if you really hated life um, and you wanted to make things harder. Um, the problem with like rotating this now at this step is that we've got a whole bunch of modeling to do over here. And when we rotate it, you can see that we've now, it's less easy to grab like, you know, one point or whatever, or to understand it. Cause you've got like a doubling, right? A doubling and it's, uh, it's a little annoying. So there's not really any disadvantages to, um, to doing this later. So essentially, I'm gonna keep it straight and flat until I finish um, this entire flat board here. Um, and then once that's done, we're just gonna go here, rotate it over and uh, it should be fine. And it'll be a lot easier to work with. Okay, so we now have our first problem. This, this rounded corner there, which again, corroborating, corroborating, corroborating. We'll go with corroborate um, with our reference. You can see that it's a, uh, yeah, it's it's a very, it's a round edge there. And then there is a, a flat face that you could imagine like you could run your finger along, you could write on it. For example, that, that is a very flat face there. And then a very flat face going this way. So how could we make this with this? Well, one way would be to just bevel this right here and don't do this, but I'm gonna show you this method and why we're not gonna use it. So bevel control B with uh, uh, an edge selected. We'll do this and then if you you increase that with your mouse wheel up, you would have this, okay? Which looks good, right? Wrong, it's terrible. No, it's it looks okay so far. However, in the future, we are gonna be using uh, smooth shading. And when you use smooth shading, you introduce artifacts that uh, that you weren't aware of were causing problems, right? So the reason we've got this horrible looking shading problem here is that this, is more than four vertices, right? It is it is over four, which means it is an n-gon, which is anything over four vertices. It's not good. Typically, you want to have what you can see here, which is four four vertices. That makes a face, and it's very easy for the uh, renderer, the shader, whatever the wizards that work in the background of Blender. It's easy for them to understand what this should look like. Um, when you have three, it's a try, which is also not good. Um, and if you just have more than that, you can create some, some problems. Now you could fix this by like, you know, breaking this down, adding in loop cuts, etc. And I've done that. I've actually made this chair, probably this will be like my 11th time making the chair for this tutorial. Cause I had to like, you know, uh, understand the, 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 the subject well enough and explore all the different methods of doing it so that I could teach the right method to you. So that's anyways, but I've done it this way and it's, it's a lot of work, right? So instead, what we're gonna do is we're not going to use the, how many undoes? We're not, oh, one more, come on, there we go. We're not gonna do the bevel way. Instead, we're gonna be using the subdivision, sub subsurf modifier. <laughs> it's got a longer name and a shorter name. But anyways, if you go to your add modifier stack here, this is the modifier stack, nothing in it yet. We're gonna add in the subdivision surface modifier, also known as the subdiv modifier. And it looks like this, which 
Young and old, beginners and experts alike can all agree that this looks terrible, right? Um, so far, right? Now, what this is doing is uh, it is essentially averaging out your mesh and it's adding in another cut where there isn't one uh, before, like another, it's adding in extra geometry, extra detail, right? So we we have a very low poly like mesh, this this cage looking thing here, right? That's very low poly. And so what it's doing is it's, it's averaging out from there to there to there, right? So that is three, three vertices and they're very far apart and they're at a 90 degree angle and it, it's a lot to average out. So it's essentially going all the way up and around, right? Because that's where the vertices are. Um, however, you could imagine that if, uh, if instead of it, you know, all the way out to there, if instead that vertice or another vertice was right about here, for example, then it wouldn't go all the way out to there, it would go up, 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 and then go sort of like that, right? And then likewise, if you had another vertice that was here instead, then it would just be like that. So that is what we want. We want that nice rounded corner there. So we wanna control this uh, ugly looking mesh right now um, with uh, enough detail. Okay, let me just turn off the annotations. Okay, so I'm gonna loop cut. So Control R, another loop cut. Add this in right here, and I'm gonna drag it out to be something tighter. Let's go side view mode. Yeah, right where that line is right there, that's where I wanna do it. So I just double tapped G just to slide that along. And then I'll add another loop cut here, Control R. Click once to uh, start the operation, and then again, it's just gonna slide it up until it's about there, double tap G again, and there we go. So you can see we've now controlled that, um, we've controlled where it is, right? So it's no longer a crazy long shape, it's now just averaging out from there to there to there, which is lovely. And if we turn up the viewport, uh, you can see that it, it's, every one of these steps, it's adding in like a, another duplicate of, of detail between it, right? So from there to there to there, it's now got one, two, three, four, five, six, six faces. Whereas if we turned it down, it was like one face, two. Anyway, you get the idea. It's just, it, it's smoothing it out the more, the higher you go. Um, okay, so that looks pretty good, right? And it matches almost like we could uh, take this and just drag this out a little bit further. And it will pretty pretty closely match that, that curve there. We'll add in more detail on things later. But as a teaser, as a cliffhanger for the next part of this video, <laughs> big cliffhanger, are you ready? Dun, dun, dun. How are we supposed to solve this problem? Which is that it's not just averaged out uh, from there to there, right? And doing that, but it's now also averaging out from there to there, right? So we've now got this, what should be a flat face here and a flat face here. It's now rounding it round, right? Like it, it tends to look a little bit like Play-Doh if you don't know what you're doing with it. So that's what we're gonna fix in part two. So go ahead, click here on your screen and uh, let's get into the next fun bit of this modeling. See you there.